high second and third grade. This is Ms. Maney and this is your second lesson for our e-learning. So this is week number two and this is the only music lesson that you have this week. We're gonna take it easy, but we're going to start something new. We're going to start learning about different composers and we're going to be talking about composers for the rest of our year together, okay? So through the end of May, we'll be talking about composers of music. Now a composer is a person who writes music either by musical notation, which is what we see right up there, which we're kind of familiar with. It's when you write notes on a staff. A composer either uses that musical notation or sometimes a composer will write music just by making it up while they're playing it. But today we're going to start by learning about Mozart. And Mozart was a composer. He was born in 1756 in Salzburg, Austria. And he usually wrote music on the staff like we see right there. That's how he composed his music. And even though he was born in Salzburg, Austria, he ended up moving to Vienna, Austria to get a better job. And even though those two places are in the same country, they're actually 184 miles apart. So... He had a little bit of a trip because this is in the 1750s. So it wasn't quite easy to travel like it is easy for us to travel now. Now Mozart was a very talented musician and a composer. And he was so talented that he composed his first piece. So he wrote his first piece of music by the age of four. That means that he wasn't even old enough to be in kindergarten yet and he was already writing music. And by the age of six, which is the age that you turn when you're in kindergarten, he was already performing concert tours for royal families throughout Europe. He was really good. Now, remember when I said that Mozart was born in 1756? That time in music history, we call the classical period. It's a period of time between 1750 and 1820 when music was composed. And a lot of that music that they wrote during that time was very clear and catchy. In fact, one of Mozart's pieces is so catchy that you've already sang it a lot of times, but I'll tell you more about that piece of music in a bit. But back to Mozart. Mozart was a short man and he had a high singing voice, which we call a tenor. He worked very hard and would spend a lot of time working on his music. He wrote over 600 works and is considered one of the most important composers of all time. His most famous works include Eine Kleine Nach music, which should sound familiar. Yeah, or The Marriage of Figaro. or the magic flute. And he also wrote many piano sonatas and concertos and, and more things too. Remember, he wrote 600 works, over 600 works. But uh, the most famous piece that he wrote is my favorite piece, and it's probably yours too, at least as far as music that you know by Mozart. It's called 12 Variation of the Dirge Maman. I don't think I said that right, but we know it as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Did you know that the melody that we use to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is the same melody that we use to sing the ABCs? And Ba Ba Black Sheep. What's a melody? It's the tune or the notes that we sing to play or play to make a song. Which basically means that if we sang those songs but took away all of the words, all three of those songs would sound exactly the same. Let me show you what I mean. Doot. So, if we're looking at a piano, whoa, if we're looking at a piano, Let's look at the notes that I would play if I wanted to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are. 
Now look at the notes that I would play if I wanted to play the ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Or what if I wanted to play Ba, Ba, Black Sheep? Ba, Ba, Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. Did you notice anything? It's the same song. It's the same song. We just use different words when we sing each of the songs. Oh, I'm so close to you. And that's kind of cool. Mozart, he made that song. So, second and third grade, you have an assignment from me. Don't worry, it's not hard. Listen to that melody again, and I want you to sing it. Sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and then sing the ABC song. But I want you to sing it to somebody who is not watching this with you. Somebody who has not read your worksheet with you. Maybe that's a parent or a brother or sister or a cousin or maybe it's a pet or maybe it's a stuffed animal. Sing those songs, ABC song, excuse me, and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star back to back, and see if that person that you're singing to notices. See if they notice what those songs have in common. Does that person realize the melody is exactly the same? And then I want you to tell them two cool things that you just learned about Mozart. It could be anything, whatever that you remember that you thought was pretty neat. Maybe you have to watch this video again or read the worksheet again and remember. That's okay, but that is your job, okay? Now, before we leave for the day, whoa, oh no. I almost dropped you. Okay, before we leave for the end of the day, I wanna read a book to you. This is because, this book is because, and this book is a little extra special because those of you who are in Ms. Rapp's third grade class know that you gave me this book. So maybe you've already read this with me or with somebody else, but I want to read it with you because, because it's about composers. It has a couple different composers in it, but then it talks about all the other people that it takes to put one piece of music together. It's not just one person. It takes a lot of people to work together. So let's read this. This is by Mo Williams and Amber Wren, and it's called Because. And it goes like this. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. Because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music. They formed an orchestra. And because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join. Because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play. Because many others loved and practiced their instruments, there were enough musicians. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music, tickets were sold. And because the train conductor stopped the train at the grand concert hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score. The orchestra rehearsed. Because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, 
The ushers opened the doors. Because someone's uncle caught a cold, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. Because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. In row C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz, and it changed her. The girl was changed. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music because it fed her. Soon she started to write music too because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. One night, her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. Then she was invited to perform her music at the Grand Concert Hall because so many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14, because it was his ticket that brought her here. And that night, someone else was changed. That is how it happens. I hope you had a wonderful spring break. I hope you are having a wonderful week. And I hope you are finding time to relax a little and spend time with your families as well as do your homework, okay? So I will see you next week. You can click around my YouTube channel if you want to see more videos that I've made. It's not just lessons that I've been doing. It's other books, other songs, and things like that. But I will talk to you soon. Have a good day.